It's Yellen coming on to our side slowly Uh-oh. but surely. It maybe seems that way. Nationwide safety. Yellen let slip her plan to regulate crypto as the value of Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Solana, Cardano, and Dogecoin sink. Uh, Treasury uh, Secretary Janet Yellen gave her first speech about crypto and, and the regulation, whereas her handle had a sudden pro-crypto undertone. Yellen known uh, is known for a far more durable regulatory stance. She's known for being tough. Shoppers need to be shielded from fraud, no matter whether or not property are saved on a steadiness sheet or a distributed ledger. Cash laundering and different illicit exercise needs to be deemed unlawful. It doesn't matter whether or not you are utilizing checks, wires, or cryptocurrency. She made a few refined remarks that will trace how regulators will information crypto coverage sooner or later. For a lot of the previous century, uh, the dollar loved the advantages of being the world's reserve foreign um, currency. Yellen pressured that retaining this privilege needs to be regulators' precedence of their method to digital property. I think this is a pretty important question. She said retaining the dollar supremacy needs to be regulators' precedence of you know, what they uh, are considering when it comes to digital currencies. I think they know, and we've been saying on this channel for years, essentially at this point, the way for the U.S. dollar to keep its hegemony as the world's currency is going to go the digital route. It has right. to go a digital route. Whether or not you know they team with USDC, whether or not you know they issue their own, this is the only way it's going to work. You know, just trying to keep it as just the good old regular SWIFT banking system and the greenbacks. It's not going to work. So you know, hopefully this method will get us into uh, the right path of you know. Of course, it's me. I'm a little biased. I live in America. But, you know, that would keep it, you know, remaining number one, essentially, here. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, supply and demand is always kind of what drives all markets. So they're yep. trying to make sure, basically what they're saying indirectly is we need to make sure there's demand for the dollar. As long as there's enough demand for the dollar, we can keep printing and maintain this kind of global economic dominance that we've enjoyed for the last, you know, while. Um and we think basically what they're doing with USDC, what we covered on the show yesterday with BlackRock Circle, yeah. which is Goldman Sachs putting hundreds of millions and billions of dollars into backing USDC. Now that BlackRock is the number one cash reserve, that is what? Demand for the dollar. As long yep. as more chains and more markets and more uh, nations are using USDC to get in and out of currencies. Now it's becoming the de facto global reserve digital currency, which is what they want. And then they can exchange that with central banks. Yeah. And they have two main competitors as the way I see it, you know, yep. it's Bitcoin and uh Chinese digital uh, yuan there. So, you know, th- it's going to be a battle within, within uh, those three currencies, I believe. And, you know, it's going to be an exciting, I would say this is a, five-year, 10-year, maybe even a 20-year battle. 20 seems a little long, but I see it being pretty interesting uh, starting, you know, maybe even a year or two from now. I think that's when uh, things will finally start getting heated up. But yeah, uh, real quick on this, she instructed uh, CBDCs might fulfill the necessar- uh, necessity for digital foreign money, whereas retaining America's reserve foreign money privilege. Uh, she later made a specific comment that clarified her stance on the centralized versus centralized money debate. Sovereign cash is the core of a well-functioning monetary system. Uh, She wrote, you know, not too long ago, 87 nations, which uh, uh, make up over 90% of the world's GDP, are contemplating launching their own digital currencies based on Atlantic Council. 14 are on a check run together with China, and nine have already launched with Nigeria, introducing final. Some of those uh, ones that have already launched is like Pacific Island nations. So we haven't really seen too many big countries step into the, the fray here, but when China does, that's going to be, you know, uh, the end game, essentially. So we haven't seen it too much. You know, they're testing it. They're testing it in Olympic Village. They're testing it in Beijing subways. But I feel when China rolls this out, it's going to be very sudden. It's going to be a quick rollout. One thing we saw with, just say, their hospital construction, you know, a couple years ago. When they set their mind to do something, you know, whether it's build a mega city that can hold 40 million that only has 2 million residents. They can build that. They can build that mega city. You know, they can build out that uh, that CBD structure. You know, it will probably shock us how quickly and efficient, efficiently it does roll out nationwide. And that's how I see that uh, playing out. I mean, I don't know, but uh, you know, their track record shows that when they set out to do something, they do it pretty efficiently. Yeah, it's because they have all the. They have such a huge population. So almost, if you want to put it in tech terms, they have a huge user base to to push the test across. 
yep. almost kind of like the Facebook of, you know, government more or less. When you have that many people trapped in your system, you just push out any update you want and it's yeah. going to take and her down. I don't want to sound too bullish on China, but they, uh, their government is also a merit-based promotion system instead yeah. of America's popularity-based promotion system where you get more popular, so you rise through the ranks of, you know, your political spectrum. Whereas China, you know, you might be the water maintenance guy of a small town. And the next thing you know, you're the mayor of a town. Then the next thing you know, you're on like a, a township's uh, council governor. Next thing. So it's it's more of a merit-based. Now, I know they have cronyism there, but it's it's largely uh, not who can speak, you know, on a televised debate better than the next guy. It's what's your accomplishments? What have you done? You know, are right. the trains running on time? To, can the toilets flush and, you know, everybody's drinking clean water? All right, we'll move you up. So. Yeah. I think a lot of that is, uh, you know, just due to their system, essentially. Mm -hmm.